powered by Alienware. Hey everyone, it's Andrew here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Alienware Alpha R2 PC. Overall, it's the form factor of a console and probably the smallest console there is at only a little over 2 inches tall and less than 8 inches deep and 8 inches across, weighing 4 pounds. The other reason I called it a PC is because it runs Windows 10 and comes packaged with a mouse and keyboard, something not typically found with a console when you think about it. So overall, I think it's both a PC and a console, a good combination that the Steam machine wanted to be, but with OS limitations that were difficult to ignore. The first thing you probably want to know is what kind of specs does the Alpha come in? The base model for the new Alpha is $599 US dollars with an i3-6100T processor and a Radeon R9M470X. Next, at $799, you'll get an i5-6400T and a GTX 960. And at the top spec we have for $949 US dollars is an i7-6700T, a GTX 960, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, and a one terabyte hard drive. The version I was sent for review was the top spec model with a $200 Dell recommended upgrade of a 256 gigabyte M.2 PCIe SSD teamed up with a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard disk drive. This way the OS is on a super fast M.2 and you'll have plenty of storage space for games and media dedicated to the hard disk drive. This is honestly the way you should be setting up a PC in my experience and how you'd want to do it for gaming. I even checked some numbers to see what a comparable system would cost to build and the Alpha shows it's pretty competitively priced, especially for the form factor. I build custom PCs in my spare time and I would have a hell of a hard time packaging this much power into something of this size. My hat's off to the designers. Included with the all new Alphas is an Alienware multimedia keyboard and the Alienware standard optical mouse two front mounted USB 3.0 ports, one bottom mounted USB 2.0 usually used for hiding wireless controller dongles, two rear USB 3.0 ports, one RJ45 GBE, one HDMI out 2.0 port, one HDMI in 2.0 port, one optical audio out, one DC in for power, and one Alienware graphics amplifier slot if you happen to have one of those. But how does it all perform? Well, actually pretty well. Testing everything at 1080p, we saw numbers in titles like Overwatch on high settings average 110 FPS with max FPS spikes at 126 and minimum frame rates of 79. For kicks, I turned all of the settings up to epic and still had an average FPS of 52 with a max FPS spike of 69 and had one minimum frame at 20 FPS during an intense moment of battle. Next, we tested Dirt Rally and their benchmark test settings had everything at high and average 84 FPS with a max of 102 and a minimum of 71. I ran one more test turning everything up to ultra and had an average FPS of 52 with a max of 71 and a minimum of 43. To make sure both the GPU and the CPU were running in harmony, I decided to test City Skylines, a game that is notoriously known for causing lots of problems on the CPU side of things compared to other titles. On high, the game ran at averages of 45 frames per second and a max of 60 and with a minimum coming down to 31 frames per second. Fresh cities with less developments hold a pretty constant 60 FPS, but my numbers were in a massively filled city that almost took up an entire region. Finally, I ran GTA 5 with its recommended settings, which placed it at high and averaged 57 FPS with a max of 61 and a minimum of 30. I also did have a chance to live stream with the device to see how well it would cope with the experience and to my surprise it honestly didn't really care. At 1080p output with 60 frames per second and multiple hours of streaming, the new Alpha didn't even really break a sweat. Granted I was only playing Hearthstone but still a test that most PCs will never experience and it met it with great results. If I had any complaints, the two that I would have are that the mouse and keyboard included are fine, but I prefer a mechanical keyboard and a slightly different sized mouse, but that just might be me and my preferences. And the fans at full load in its attempts to keep the GPU at or below 80 degrees Celsius can make a bit of noise, and some of the people in the office wanted to point that out as they walked by. I didn't actually think it was outrageously loud, but you definitely can hear them when they are doing their job. 
So where does that leave us? Is this a replacement for your PC or the mother of all consoles? I mostly see it as the mother of all consoles with the added perks and most benefits of a full PC. For sure, this is much more powerful than any current console. And yes, it costs more than any current gen console, but that's because it does more than just stream Netflix and play games since it has full-fledged Windows OS. I think for most of my amazement and attention, I focus on its power to size. Its form factor is impressive, and it makes the new Alpha a great traveling PC that still delivers a powerful punch. I don't think it's meant to replace your PC. If that was the case, Alienware wouldn't make the Area 51. But it does give the current generation consoles a pretty good thrashing and is capable of so much more. I want to thank you all for watching. I've been Andrew, and always remember to enjoy the game.